Alright, what's going down? This is K7 Letha of Video Entertainment. Uh, I've done cover, uh, CD covers designed for damn near 20 plus years. Alright, 20 plus years. I, I was doing designs before Photoshop became a thing. And you actually had to go in and mask things out with a scalpel and uh, use filters to cut things out uh, ruby lith paper and things like that screen print you know you had to set it all up by hand so I'm gonna show y'all how I do a CD cover it's not necessarily the only way to do it you gotta be open minded in design game some people are gonna have good criticism some people are gonna just say that you suck some people are gonna say that you're awesome some people will want your work but aren't willing to pay and some people are willing to pay so you just got to kind of navigate it like a like a like a ship so here we go we're going to create a new document this is adobe photoshop but you can use gimp you can use ms paint if you're good enough you know and you want to tolerate how the limitations uh, pretty much everything that in photoshop you can do in gimp so here we go we're going to create a new document a CD cover typically is 4.76 by 4.76, it's square, but I'm going to do 5 inches because I want to be able to scale it down or cut it or crop it depending on the manufacturer that we send it to. So uh, you usually have a bleed border and then you'll have a cut border. So 5 inches lets you have a little bit of flexibility. Uh, this is the big thing, I see a lot of... I'm not going to say wannabe designers, but designers that are inexperienced, they're good at what they do or, or they just wanted to kind of save a little money and dive in because they got the program for free somewhere or whatever. Uh, 72 resolution. This is 72 dots per inch or pixels per inch. This is web, only for internet purposes, anything you see on a screen. Uh, if you wanted to make like a, a logo for video, uh, stuff like that, because it's it's, it's going to be a file shown on a VGA monitor or an HDMI monitor or whatever. Of course, on HDMI, you're not going to want 72, but it'll, it'll work. Yeah. If you're making like a, a 1080p video and you import a 72 DPI logo that's the right size, it's going to look you know, pretty much okay. But industry standard for a long time for CD covers is 300 DPI. Now, I owned a print press and a, a lot of machines, and over the years I've to cut the file sizes prior to terabyte hard drives and, and SD cards, when you had to burn everything to like a CDR or put it on a floppy disk, you wanted to cut the size as much as possible, so I made it 250 DPI and it still looked pretty much the same as 300 DPI but most printers and and uh, places that actually still put the image onto a physical form they want 300 DPI now in recent days or recent years uh, the R RGB red green blue color versus the CYMK cyan magenta yellow black has n is, is no longer really an issue because everything's digital but a lot of places still require CYMK and that's the color separation that you would have uh, CYMK is good for like uh, silk screen vinyl stuff that's gonna be four color process but with digital, see, they went they went from four color process that blends and overlaps to pretty much unlimited colors, like uh, printing direct to garment and things like that. So most of that's really not going to matter if you want a background that's transparent. I work with transparent backgrounds, but I always put a background in, so it doesn't matter. But most of that really doesn't make a difference. That 300 DPI and the five inch by five inch is really going to make it make a impact on your design work. Because 72 DPI, it looks like mosaic. When they print it out, it's, it has like blocks. And it just doesn't look, it looks real basement design. You know, I, I, 
And maybe you want that. But uh, I personally don't. I want clear, crisp imagery. Now, your disc face, the actual CD itself, which, you know, we're, they're going away the dodo. Your disc face is typically 600 DPI. And that's a big file. All right. So you've got to have, you know, a good... You don't really need to have a SD card or anything anymore, you, but you're going to send the files, you know, through high-speed internet. So you're going to need pretty decent internet to do it. So let's create. Now here's my workspace. I like to drag it out because I want it floating. I don't want to have it stationary on the background. Uh, at 33.33% view, you'll see a little bit of choppy, like block pattern uh, distortion or whatever you want to call it. I like I typically, if I'm at if I'm at 300 DPI at five inches, I like to go at 25% just to get started. I'll zoom in on things if I got to crop it or whatever. But so here's the deal. Um, uh, Hatch Gotti sent me. I've already done the CD design for his St. Valentine's Day massacre, but uh, he wants a poster or a, uh, like a mock cover for the, the promotion of the album. So I'm going to bring in, you can just double click back here and it'll open up, you know, your whatever you want to call it, your browser. I just got this Photoshop. I don't. I'm not really particular with this type of Photoshop, but I like the original, like seven and eight and nine. I don't like the Creative Cloud at all. So he sent me these two files here. Probably not gonna work with that one right now. I'm just gonna do a ski mask. So I drug it over. Won't get rid of that one. He's gonna want a little bit of his chain showing. Alright, I got my record menu in the way that y'all can't see. But we're gonna go to edit, free transform, scale. You know, if you know the shortcuts and like all the shortcuts, that's cool. I don't, I just, I don't waste brain power on that kind of shit. So anyway. Uh, see, we're already, we're already going to be dealing with getting cut off, but I'm going to cut some of it off anyway. Uh, uh, now, over here is your layers. I would normally delete the transparent layer. Um, I like to make a new layer and drag it to the bottom. And I like to flood it with usually black. But sometimes I do white backgrounds. But anyway, I'm going to have a border here, so it's not going to matter. So anyway, we want to edit this image a little bit. So let's go to auto levels or adjustments and then levels. And then we're going to try to darken it up a little bit. Bring some of the, make some of the blacks darker, like the shadows and stuff. Then we're going to go into your color, uh, let's see, it's different on here than it was on the other. Selective color. So we're going to go selective color. Uh, when you print CYMK, or uh, even RGB now, but CYMK, you want to add a little bit of cyan because your blacks will actually be darker. Just a little percentage. But, well, that wasn't the cyan I wanted to do. Uh, in the blacks. In the blacks, you want to add a little bit of cyan because it's not going to look like what you see on a monitor because there's no light. It's going to it's gonna make the inks real crisp for the, uh, the black, the... the the black color is going to be real dark, like awesome. So anywhere between 5 and 10%. Then I'll adjust my blacks a little bit. Not too much, just depending on the image. And then we'll take our whites. We're going to take the black and the white all the way down to make all this white just pop off the page. 
and our neutrals again if you want like a blue look you just go ahead and move your cyan if you want like that green money chasing look take your take your magentas out but what I want I want to try to make this light pop make the light pop while making making this image seem more high def even though it's not so that's okay there now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a copy of this layer and we're gonna go over here to your layer options and you're just gonna hit the down arrow or you can hit the uh, mouse wheel and see check that out look at that that already looks that already looks like an industry photo right there just from doing uh, multiply but uh... let's go in and see what we got every image is different so you can pre-program yourself in your head to think that it's going to work on each image but it's, it's not it all depends on the camera it all depends on the file that you get i kind of like that one but it doesn't really change I mean, it's a, it's so slight. It's like less than one percent. You can't even. I bet you can't even see it, but I can see it. It's just barely in some of these areas that it lightens slightly, and it's not enough to really make a difference. Uh, see, like this look has more of a like a in the past or action sequence look. I don't want that. I want. I like that multiply look. Look at that. That's right. Now, see, you can see the difference by taking it out. Look at that. Uh, that multiply look. That that darkness adds like the film quality to it. Now you can already see what my border is sort of going to look like. So for the border, we're going to add a new layer. We're going to get my. Uh, they call them marching ants in in school, in college, and stuff. Or in, in uh, classes, but I'm gonna get your selection tool. They call it the rectangular marquee, and as you can see, the shortcut is M. You're just gonna highlight it. Then you're gonna go over here to inverse. I'm mean not inverse. You're gonna go to modify, and you're gonna make a border, and make it uh, on average about 20 to 30. So let's try 25. Alright, that wasn't enough. This Photoshop is slightly different. So let's say uh, I'll go to Select, Modify, then do Border, and we'll do 50. Alright, so 50 is a little better. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I have to invert it or not. Go ahead and get your Fill Tool called the Paint Bucket, and G. see what we got all right so it did the slight fade you can't really see it unless you let's get rid of all this so see you can see it like a fade let's go to deselect you can see how it kind of fades well you can change that uh, when you do your uh, marquee tool you can actually change the feather here and the anti-lace and all that and it'll change that there's another way to do it if that doesn't work but I kinda like the fade on this one the fade kinda looks good so you can see how it it kinda makes it like a Polaroid so we're gonna leave it at that now we're gonna go to the type tool and I downloaded a like a 5000 font pack now you do got to be careful. It, it doesn't come back to bite you as much as like sampling in, a, in an album or uh, anything like that. But there are a lot of fonts that people use that are not freeware. They're they're not shareware. They're not freeware. Uh, you can use them as f uh, freeware or shareware on free stuff. Anything that you're just making. But once you want to sell a copy, like you know, you say this album's gonna we're gonna get five thousand copies of this album. Or we're gonna uh sell let's say we sell a hundred digital copies. It's got somebody's font file on here that they created. 
even the ones that are like copies of Resident Evil and uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and you know fonts like that someone eventually may decide to file suit so you gotta be careful and see if they're freeware or donation based shareware uh, what they call uh, commercial wear stuff like that but anyway it's gonna be Hatch Gotti so we're gonna go up in here with the text tool Hatch Gotti select it change the color to white for now and I typically like to use white for everything for my fonts but sometimes I'll get intricate but that's just one of my personal pet peeves or styles or whatever you want to call it all right so everything here a hundred percent height a hundred percent width I sometimes like to mess with that stuff but uh, this font's actually looking pretty good. Um, but we're going to go ahead. Right here is your, I call it tracking, but it's actually got a different name. But I'm going to bring in, the, I usually like to do negative 25 on my fonts. Uh, the spacing here in between each, in between each letter, I really like spacing it properly, like... Some letters, some text, especially if it's capital, like an A, if you have a capital A here, check it out. It leaves a lot of space up here in the triangle, but over here it's not leaving that much. So I like to bring this in a little bit and kind of balance it. I could actually spend an hour just messing with type, but uh, we're going to capitalize this whole thing. And then go ahead and just use the default alright hatch got a now this isn't finished this is just the basics we're gonna go to levels or uh, yeah no layers we're gonna go to layers layer style and we're gonna get the uh, the drop shadow. So there's drop shadow. Now this is pretty much default to the same thing. I don't like using the global light. Uh, that's okay, but I usually like it to be closer to 90. Now I don't want any distance. Some people like distance. I don't want any. But what this is gonna do? See how? Check it out. Up here. See where this border just appeared? Watch. Uh, where's my damn drop shadow? Okay, right here. Now watch up here where this H is. You see how that H pops out? Look at that. Look at that H and that A. They pop out. Boom. You could kind of, you could sort of read it, but now, boom, you could read that thing. Uh, spread is always 100%, and your size is going to be dependent on your DPI, which... Remember, some webs, web graphics, 72 DPI. A lot of print graphics, 300 DPI. Your disk face, 600 DPI. Now, that's going to change. Now, what happens is you can't build a file at 72 DPI and then try to bump it up to 300 DPI. But you can go down, and it'll be fine, 300 DPI. But you want to flatten it before you do that. But we'll get into that. So anyway, I see how this little bit pops. I like that. I want it like that. Uh, four is looking okay for this. But let's try five. Five's okay. Eight. See, you start getting a little too much. I don't really like too much, so go back down to four. Now, occasionally, I don't do it all the time, but occasionally you like to go to the bevel and the emboss and uh, turn it up all the way. And then, instead of smooth, make it chiseled. Uh, you don't really have to do much to the size but change this down here make it see it kind of makes a chrome look but it, it ain't real good on this font 
it ain't that good on this font so I'm not gonna do it so anyway uh, let's go to free transform under edit and kind of So let's go down here to the layers and get the, the background layer. Now I don't have my rulers, so I need to bring up my view. Just show rulers. Now I got this ruler here. I can just drag it and I put it on center. So now I can take my Hatch Gotti text and put it right on center. Now I might I might have to add where is my damn see I, I don't like this new photoshop it's just kinda fucked up uh... i guess show transform control oh. i guess that'll be cool cause then you can just do what you want with it <sighs> there's an option i seen it earlier now i don't know where the fuck it's at let's see go back uh... nope where the fuck is the motherfucker? Let's do that. Convert. No. No, 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 no. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. I hate new Photoshop. Property. No. Well, anyway, there's a way to bubble. Oh, there it is, right there, right in front of my fucking face. Uh, there's a way to arc it. See, check it out. Uh, sometimes it'll work. Sometimes it won't. Like, not work like the f the program, but just the way it looks. Sometimes it just doesn't. Sometimes it don't look right. Uh, I can go back to free transform. I want to do perspective, but I can't. So what you have to do is you got to go to layer and rasterize the type. Now I can go back, but now I can't edit that type. That type stays just like it is. I'm gonna do some perspective. I'll try to try to bring it and scale it a little bit. Uh, sometimes when, like, I don't, if I drag this, it's gonna make it go to the left, cock to the left. So what I'll do is I'll take the width and I'll change it. And that's more of what I wanted. But see, yeah, it ain't gonna let you in this new. I mean, it wouldn't let you do it in the old one either. But anyway, that's hatch got it. So now what I want to do, I don't want to see as much of the background there. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to my burn tool. I'm not sure. I guess it's here. No, that's smudge. I don't know where my burn tool is in this new Photoshop. Gotta be here somewhere. It's normally under that, but uh, no. Oh fuck! Where's the damn burn to? Where's my burn to? See if the B will work. No, nope. that's brush. What? Uh, I don't remember what the damn burn tool was. Uh, eyedropper. Let's 
still I. Uh, what about this? Here we go. Burn tool. Boom. Uh, you're going to hit your close parentheses or close bracket parentheses, whichever one you want to call it. And you're going to widen it to about the height of the letters. I'm going to try to burn uh, exposure 50 midtones. I'm going to do shadows. And I'm going to try to darken. Go to the layer above it. I'll try to darken some of this. Uh, let's do the exposure at 70%. Ah, not 7%. Dyslexic ass. There we go. Try that. There we go. Yeah. Now I'm going to do midtones. See, look at that. Yeah. There we go. So that way, it kind of like makes the text look like it's hovering a little bit. So now that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and make a copy of the text. We're going to keep the one that we... Do, since it's both copies, we're going to keep the top one the same so the drop shadow still pops. We're going to go and edit this drop shadow on the second layer. And what we're going to do is... That's where that 90% is going to come into play. We're going to add some distance. Now... Check that out. Gonna bring that down some. I kind of like it like that because it still lets you see the text. Alright, so that's Hatch Gaddy. And then just something basic, you'll be like, coming soon. I don't really like using coming soon, but that's what we got right now. Uh, Alright, coming soon. And then I'll keep that negative 50, but see the space. Make it red. Alright, the space here. Well, I want to bring it in. So we're going to go to the spacing between the letters. And so it's 36. So we're going to do a little bit more than 36 usually. But that type of... That's looking good on that font. I want to change the font. be a minute probably what is that it look like nah that don't look good more like a more like a let's do that looks alright well that's a bite nah we don't want that let's do Like a tearing looking font or a. No, that, that, that's not good enough. What about that one? Aliens. Yeah. I'm a picky ass when it comes to, to text. I already seen that one, jackass. Uh. See, that typically fits because it's got the barbed wire and shit. Fuck it, we'll use that one. Let's see. I have to go smaller on this particular font, so. Uh, 
36 actually looks okay there. But let's go ahead and make it 38. Yeah, look at that. Now needs to be like we closed we closed the hatch Gotti font in with the tracking and made it negative 25. Well, this particular font at 50 looks like that. So we're going to make it 100. Did it even change? Alright. 200 maybe. So anyway, we're going to edit and go to scale. And let's widen this out a little bit and then put it we're gonna put it like it's floating in front so we're gonna bring it to the very top layer and now what we're gonna do is go to it add layer layer style drop shadow we're gonna add that drop shadow that made the other one pop Distance back to zero, 100%. I see three looks good on that one. Now, I'm going to use the arrow keys and just bring it up. And then I'm going to come down here and do Saint. Valentine Day. Uh, okay, what is that font? That font looks good. That's just regular Times New Roman. Son of a bitch. New Omen. Hey. <laughs> ah, come on, bitch. Times no Roman. I kind of like the italic. I'm going to keep the italic. We're gonna we're gonna keep it uh, fully capital, but we're gonna bring in the tracking, and then we're gonna change the size slightly. it underlined. I don't want fucking underlined. You bitch. Okay, there we go. Alright, we're going to copy coming soon. Uh, copy layer style. Where's my layer? There it is. Copy layer style. And then we're going to right click on the other layer and paste layer style. There we go. a little better. 
we're going to edit the drop shadow slightly since it's smaller now. And we're going to make it... Hell, yeah, we might make, make the drop shadow red, like a dark red look. There we go. That looks pretty good. Coming soon down a little bit. Still put it up. There we go. That's the only thing I don't like is how you link them together. Like, like it used to be right here. Sure. Guess you could do that, Link. There we go, Link. Ha ha. add your explicit lyrics or your header at the top or whatever uh, this is just like a you could get you can get these printed up or uh, send them out on like Instagram and stuff to come and soon you know put the date I guess I could put the date on there so Let's copy the St. Valentine's Day Massacre and bring it down here. And do like shit. in there and do the fucking ham la 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 some lam <laughs> you like this shit mosato <laughs> oh shit uh, no hell no it looks like fucking paint <laughs> Come on, bitch. Give me something. Give me something. They do drugs. So life won't hurt them. Won't hurt them no more. Nope. 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 Yeah, that, that normally don't look good, but that looks alright for this particular. So life won't hurt them no more. Kind of like, kind of a barbed wire-y sort of-ish. Uh, maybe should make that that color. Alright, we're going to put that at the bottom. And 
And since it's at the bottom, it doesn't really match until you do that. And then say... CME and that ain't gonna work so. <gasps> kinda like impact for that that's like my go-to if I can find the motherfucker. Impact. There we go. Uh, but I don't want it bold. Alright. We're going to have to spell it out. the fuck enter god damn Shit. Damn it. I wish there was a font that could, or a program that could say, look, when you write VI, it's V, capital V, little I, no matter what. Alright, let's zoom in a little bit. See, like this needs to be way smaller because it's VIDO. Uh, and that needs to be like half. No, not that half. Zero. And then like zero. Alright, cold music. Entertainment, video entertainment. I'll go ahead and put this video distro. There'll be some little tweaks here and there, but for the most part, that's what you got. <sighs> Don't forget, uh, as you do, I'd say not every layer, but as you do like 30 minutes to an hour's worth of work, always save the shit. Turning off maximize capability may interfere. Da, da, da. Oh, I don't know nothing about that crap right now. 
But anyway, if you're going to do a preview layer, I'd go here to layer. I'd do merge visible or flatten image. See, and if you flatten it, you can see something. You might have to edit some of your your drop shadows and stuff because flattening changes the rasterization. But that looks okay. And then I would go to image and I would uh, make it 72 for the web and then 4.5 for. Uh, I don't know why it's not. I guess it's. Hell, I don't fucking know. Let's do that. And then do save as, and then put small preview. And then make it a PNG, which is pretty universal now. JPEG, you. you is lossless, you know, you, you lose some, but anyway, large, medium, and just do large, because it's only 72 now, you're going to do that, and then reopen your file, uh, your big file, that's the big file, now there will be some tweaks, some changes, That's it. Basic CD cover slash promo cover slash iTunes cover or whatever. But just remember the 300 DPI because that's the shit that makes or breaks the pros from the cons. And keep your CYMK or your RGB blacks darker than what you think it needs to be. Uh, Letha is out. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, holler at y'all.